Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today I am going to tell you guys some of my tips and tricks for doing the Dream Big Hoffman Dream Big panel with the Stitch Delight gorgeous designs. So a couple things I've learned. I did the leaf one um, I didn't finish it because I apparently did everything wrong. So the first tip and trick is the orientation. So the writing here that you can look at properly, that is the bottom. So always keep that on the, on the bottom. With this one, you don't have to rotate the design at all. You just have to move it back and forth and then set it up. Uh, the second thing that's really important is uh, don't be too hard on yourself. When I was doing the leaf one, I was going for 100% perfection. And that's too difficult to do. And it really doesn't matter. So you can see I'm off a little bit on this line and I'm off a little bit on that one and nobody's going to pick it out. So take it easy on yourself. It'll go a lot smoother. I am thoroughly enjoying this one, which I'm really happy about it because I was so frustrated with the leaf one. It's a little more complicated. So I thought I'd, uh, you know, kind of get to this one and it's better. So the other thing is I'm using my big, 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 big hoop. Uh, the biggest hoop that comes with my Luminaire 2, and it's a dime hoop. Now, I haven't put all the stickers on it, and I probably won't because it's only a quilting hoop, and that's the only thing I'll ever use this one for, so I just kind of like it clean for this time. So this is a super helpful, wonderful thing for any quilting because you don't have to take the hoop off of the machine. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's so very helpful and saves you a lot of time. So really, I I got this whole thing done within a few hours. So maybe six hours, maybe, uh, once I figured stuff out. The uh, last thing I'm gonna tell you is you want this fabric to be as flat as possible. So I added some um, fusible iron-on to the back to keep it nice and stiff. I used a little bit of the best press starchy stuff. It, it looks kind of wrinkled now, but that's okay. The, the best you can get it is nice and flat. Now on this one, I only have warm and natural batting. I decided on this one not to put a backing fabric on it um, for no reason. I just, I wanted the back to be clean. So I used, uh, you can see I didn't iron it very well there. I used basting spray, which is kind of nasty stuff, I got to tell you. It's a little bit nasty, but it holds really well. I think on the next one, I'm going to fuse it all together and see if I get a cleaner um, finish on it. So let's take it over to the machine and I am going to show you guys how I do this with my Luminaire. I forgot to show you guys this. So I printed out the production worksheet and I took some markers, you could use crayons, and I color coded the ones that I want. And the scribbles are kind of yay scribbles that I have it uh, finished. So it makes it a lot easier. You do start from the center and work out, even though they are numbered up here. You do start from the center and work your way out. So I have it color coded, turquoise, light turquoise, turquoise, blue, and then the pink, and then the purple. So there's, I didn't mark the purple because I didn't have the right color. 
but this is how you keep track of what you're doing. I'm going to show you my setup and then we'll work on the screen. So everything goes this way on this one. This is the pedal that I'm working on. And, you know, I could hoop this up a bit higher. Um, it's easy to figure it out from, you know, where the center of the hoop is. So let's go into embroidery. Now, uh, for, I see I might be a little close on there, but if I have to go back, I do. I did this at the table, which I don't normally do. Uh, so I have it on a zip drive because there's, you know, 52 files. And I forgot to move the camera back. There we go. You can kind of see both that way. And what did I say? Number 30. So you can just scroll down. And number 30 is right there. Now, it's going... I am going to move it because I think I'm going to be coming up too close. The idea is... Look at this. You just... Move your hoop, watch your thread, and all we have to do is this. That looks a little bit better, so I feel for each side, which is easy, and then I'm going to put it back on. And before you stitch or anything, make sure everything is pulled tight how you want it. We don't want these big bumps in. And then the next thing you have to do is make sure that this top part is in the right spot. So see how I'm feeling? I'm feeling around to make sure they match. And that's really important because it's really, really easy to put the top on and you're off and then you'll hit the hoop and we don't want to do that. So there we go. That's nice and flat. I'm pretty happy with that. I always go around and I double check everything because the last thing you want is for anything to get caught underneath. So we don't want that. <laughs> that, that I'm terrified of it. I sit and watch it because I don't want that to happen. That's fine. So number 30 and we're going to click on set and then now there's a couple things you can do if you have printed templates out if you don't have cameras that's fine honestly it's probably easier that way so what you will have done is put your template down and mark your center and then you set your um needle to show the center there you go so it's easy i didn't print out any templates because I have a Luminaire 2 and it has lots of ways. So I'm going to touch here and I'm going to scan the background. I found this a little bit easier than using the um, projector for this one. Projector is great. I'm not saying it isn't. But for this one, for my brain to function properly, I needed to have everything like an overview sort of thing so i'm minding all the fabric we don't want any problems that's a good thing about the scan too is you can make sure before you start stitching where everything's going so it is a tad bit difficult to see but i'll show you guys how i've been doing this whole thing so i can move it and i'm not too far off so I'm going to close this and I'm going to go to edit. Now, if you hit rotate, you get the move at the bottom and the rotate, which is nice. If you just go to move, you just get move. So I like to do rotate. And then if I need to do some moving, I can. So we'll place it. They were a little bit off. However, we're pretty well on there. Pretty well. So angle it up a little bit. And then this is important. I'm going to go to 200% so I can really see what needs to be done here. So I'm going to use 1% to change it over and see if that helps. And let's see. 
doesn't appear to match as well as I'd like. So let's move it that way again. And, and remember, it does not have to be perfect. I was trying way too hard before. So that's pretty much there. This is a little bit off. Maybe we need to change it. So what that means is that I didn't hoop it perfectly straight, which is fine. My writing is still at the bottom, so I'm happy with that. Now, that is not as good as what I had, so let's go back. Just small movements is how you're going to get it uh, as well as you can. So up here, we're going to hit the hand, and then that will enable you to scroll. And so we can see, now it is hard for me to see, but... Uh, Hopefully you guys can see it as well. So I'm a little off on these parts, but the outside matches quite lovely. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch it, st stitch it out. So seriously, you could play around with it for hours and hours, or you can get it as good as you can and stitch it. Honestly, this stuff isn't going to show so now we're in embroidery mode. The first step is your get out of jail free stitch. So it's just an outline. So if you're way off, way, way, way off and you don't like it, then it's easier to fix it. See, I'm okay with that. That is really honestly not going to show. Nice. And then the outside matches. So it looked way off on the screen, but it's not that far off here. So I'm happy. That's one of the things I've learned is that this, what I just did, will be just fine. If you want perfection, you're just going to be playing around with it for a long time. So make sure everything stays out of the way. And now we're going to do the stitching. And uh, I think this is a whole lot of fun. I actually have had a ton of fun with this. And the results are beautiful. So I'm really happy with how this is turning out. It is a stunning design for sure. Stunning design. I love it. I have two more. Uh, Sarah sent them to me. And I'm going to do one with all one color of thread and see how that looks. And the other one has a lot of oranges and yellows in it. And I'll see how that looks. So I didn't put any stabilizer because the batting and all this is enough. And then I have the iron on. Um, and regular bobbin thread regular embroidery thread 7511 needle i never touch the speed of my machine if you see it speeds up and slows down and uh it's beautiful so next i'm gonna do this light pink color and you can kind of see the purple over on the side too so this is going to be stunning and i'm so happy that i you know, walked away for a little bit uh, for the leaf one and figured out what, what, I, what I was doing too wrong. And the answer to that is I was just simply trying too hard. I was turning the panel all around to make everything, you know, line up. And then I was using the projector. And, and I mean, you still can use the protector. It's just projector you just have to move it around more but I got into trouble moving the changing the orientation of the panel so it should always be the lettering on the bottom if you notice too this only takes six minutes to stitch so once you get it figured out it's easy it's easy an easy stitch and I really do enjoy having the background. Maybe some of you will find the projector easier than I did. But for some reason, having the whole background in the whole hoop just made it easier for me. 
Now, in the Stitch Delight patterns, there are different sizes. So I use the big, 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 big hoop because it's easier. So if I'm off a little bit, I don't have to move everything. I can just move it over with the move button. Um, but it does have five by seven, and I think eight by 12, and then nine and a half by 14. Now this is 11 by 16, so I have a lot of a lot of playroom on it. It just makes it easier. But if you have a five by seven hoop, yes, you can do this for sure. The um, designs are quite large, as you can see, but she has the embroidery designs split wonderfully. So it really does make it a lot easier to do. So any size hoop, pretty much bigger than four by four or five by seven on, if you have one of these uh, dime hoops, I highly recommend them. I do have their newest um, hoop guard. I don't need it for this one, so I didn't put it on, but if I had all of the fabric over on this side, I would have my hoop guard there just to make sure that nothing is gonna fall in and get sewn on. I've put a lot of work into this, so I just don't want to make a, a silly mistake. So you can blend the thread colors or you can make them opposite. Pretty much anything you do is gonna look good. I did variegated for the center and actually for all the blues I had variegated, but I didn't really like it. So I did the center and I just decided on solid colors. I think it looks better. I think the variegated thread kind of I don't know, makes it too busy, but try it and see what you think. That was my conclusion of it. So doesn't this look great so far? And it's a nice, easy, quiet stitch. And when it's done, hurrah, you've done another petal, which is wonderful. So I, the first thing I would do when it starts stitching, other than the get out of jail free pass, is I would get my red marker and I would scribble out that I've done it so there's no forgetting because you probably won't be able to sit in one day do this so you're gonna have to come back to it and it's nice to know exactly precisely where you left off so it's awesome but well, that doesn't take very long at all that was easy to set up as long as you have everything hooped properly and as straight as can be so look at that it's done already how fantastic was that that was not hard and look you really you really won't notice any of this here uh, you can see it but it just looks like it's part of the quilting so I'm glad I'm not being so difficult on myself so now here's what I do for the next one I put my hoop to the side and this is going to be the next one so i put my hands here and i feel the sides of the hoop the edges and i kind of want this to be in the middle of this petal and it is it took me a little while to come up with this whole procedure and i just kind of slid it up it's probably a little crooked, you can see that, so I might want to straighten it out. You can see by the side. Pull everything nice and tight. Make sure your hoop, the bottom of the hoop, is lined up with the top, and it isn't. So, because we don't want to be hitting any hoops, do we? No, nope. so I just feel it and then go and tighten it up. So, I hope some of these quick tips will help you really, really enjoy this stitch out, this design. I know it's made all the difference to me. I don't know why I thought I had to turn it around all the time, <laughs> but that's what I did. So, you know, now it's easier and I've really loved watching this come together. So. Thanks everyone for watching. 
I'm going to keep stitching this and I'm going to be doing the pink after this one blue and marking it off. And uh, I hope you guys have fun doing this and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.